Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at cats. No, not the movie, the green-white tribal deck, featuring a couple new cards from Historic Jumpstart. We get to play with Kahira, the Orphan Guard, as our companion, giving all our cats plus one plus one and Vigilance. And then we're also a Collected Company deck, since all our creatures have mana value 3 or less, so we can all find them with the powerful 4 mana instant. An exciting new addition from Jumpstart is King of the Pride, a 3 mana 2 1 giving author cats we control plus 2 plus 1, so a great anthem effect, especially when paired with the double striking adorned pouncer, a 1 1 that we can also eternalize out of our graveyard for 5 mana, in which case it turns into a 4 4 double striking zombie cat, so a nice late game ability to have access to. Then we also have a small energy sub theme with a new 1 mana Long Tusk Stalker. A 1 1 that when it enters a battlefield or attacks generates 1 energy, and we can pay 2 energy at any point to give the Stalker a perpetual plus 1 plus 0 bonus. And we can also choose a creature card in our hand to give plus 1 plus 0 perpetually. And perpetual means that it keeps the bonus even when changing zones. So let's say we activate the Stalker, and then the opponent ends up bouncing the Stalker back to our hand. When we replay it, it will still have that original plus 1 plus 0 bonus. And then to go with our Stalker, we also have the full playset of a Long Tusk Cub, a 2 mana 2 2 that when it deals combat damage to a player generates 2 energy, and we can pay 2 energy at any point to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so it can quickly get out of hand once it starts connecting with the opponent, and then we can use the energy from Long Tusk Cub on the Stalker and the other way around. And to fuel both creatures, we also have the full set of Attune with Ether, a 1 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for a basic land card and put it into our hand, and then we generate 2 energy. And then we also have the full set of Ether Hub, which generates 1 energy when it enters a battlefield, which we can use for mana fixing, or we can potentially save the energy to use with our various creatures. Then we've got another Lord with Feline Sovereign, a 2-3, giving other cats we control plus one plus one and protection from dogs, which can sometimes come up, especially when facing any shapeshifters. And then whenever one or more cats we control deal combat damage to a player, we get to destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls, which is a nice little upside. Then we've got two copies of Pride Sovereign, a 2-2 that gets plus one plus one for each other cat we control, which can also get out of hand, and we can pay a white and tap and exert Pride Sovereign, which means it's not going to untap in the next untap step, to create two 1-1 one -one white cat creature tokens with a lifelink, so that can help us go wide. And Pride Sovereign also pairs nicely with the Vigilance from Kahira, as that potentially allows us to attack with Pride Sovereign, and then before damage we can still exert it, generating two additional cats, so the Sovereign hits for two more damage as well. And there's a bunch of other 3 drops we could be playing. We could play some number of Kahira in the main deck. We could play with Lurus just as a creature in the main deck as a way to return some of our cheaper creatures to the battlefield. We could be playing with Realmwalker, providing card advantage by letting us play cats off the top of our deck. We could play with Faceless Agent, just to name a few of the options. And then at 1 mana we've got the full set of Leonin Vanguard, a 1-1 one -one that at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control 3 or more creatures, gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn and we gain 1 life. And that life gain is a great way to enable a Janice Pride Mate, the 2 mana 2-2 two -two that whenever we gain life gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. So Pride Mate pairs very nicely with Leonin Vanguard, and we've got a few additional life linking creatures, like Sacred Cat at 1 mana, that can also be embalmed out of the graveyard. And then we've got the lifelinking tokens from Pride Sovereign as well. So I did decide to include a Janice Pride Mate over Bronzehide Lion, which would be another option at 2 mana, but I think the upside on Pride Mate is slightly higher. And then the mana base includes our 4 copies of Ether Hub. We've got Temple Garden and the Pathway as an extra dual land, and then 4 of each basic land, which we can also search up with our Attune. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a fine hand. Could go for turn one sacred cats and potentially grow the pride mate onto, or I could try to snowball the long tusk cub. Having Kahira as your companion often makes the opponent think you're on some sort of blue white control deck that doesn't have any creatures in the main, which can sometimes also affect the opponent's mulligan decisions. 
All right, points go to Delfer. Drew another long tusk cub. So interesting spot here. I think I'm okay with playing the pride mate, attacking with sacred cats, and then kind of tempt the opponent into trading away their Delver. And then the blue red decks often have a lot of two damage burn spells, but not necessarily three damage ones. It's going to be a Dragon Rage Channeler for now. Okay, so I could play Feline Sovereign here. Which would be reasonable. Alternatively, I could attack. There's a chance my opponent trades for Sacred Cat, and then I can embalm it and play a Long Tusk Cub. But I think playing Sovereign is fine here. And then ideally draw lands for Collected Company next turn. So the Pride Mate now a 5-5. Five five. Delver still doesn't transform. So your opponent must have a bunch of lands or creatures in hand. And there's Expressive Iteration. They played land before playing Iteration, which is a little unusual. So they might have a plan on where to spend that one additional mana. The Surveil from Channeler stays on top. And Unholy Heat is the card they found, so they could kill Sacred Cant here at most. So now I can potentially embalm Sacred Cant and play a Cub if we don't draw a land for company. Channeler forced to attack. Pouncer the draw. So let's attack and then... It's interesting if we want to play Cub or Pouncer. Pouncer is a bit more vulnerable to burn spells than Cub after getting plus one plus one from Sovereign if they have another Unholy Heat. Although at this point it looks like uh, the opponent already has Delirium with an artifact creature in the graveyard. So that means they'll be able to kill the Cub or the Sovereign anyway. But I think playing Cub's still fine here. Because we're also a bit limited on how many green sources we have in play. So it's going to be easier to play the Pouncer later as opposed to the Cub. So our opponent's at 8. Still 20 life ourselves. But Delirium has been achieved. As we see another Channeler. Don't expect the opponent's deck to have too many counter spells necessarily for company. As we see Heat on Pride Mate dealing 6. A blue mana left. But we still have our Feline Sovereign at least. Ooh, King of the Pride could also be great here. So let's play that. And smash. And my yeah, opponent would be dead here if they don't have any interaction. They can shump the cub and still take eight. A bounce spell on King of the Pride could be bad because then they get to ambush the feline sovereign as well. But our opponent's just dead here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty slow hand. Only two lands, no one drop. Hmm, don't love this. If I had a third land, I would feel more comfortable keeping. Maybe if I were on the draw. But I need to draw runner runner lands, basically. This is a little bit better. And I'll keep double pouncer since I don't have any life gain synergy for pride mates. Pouncer into Sovereign's not bad.
Vanguard a little bit late to the party. So it could be up against blue-white control, in which case having these embalm and eternalize creatures is useful. Alright, Stalker. A little bit short on green mana here, potentially. Opponent could have a counter spell like Sensor, which is a reason not to play Feline Sovereign, and maybe try to double spell instead. So, don't care about gaining one life, so let's attack first, see what happens. That works. Alright, that resolved pretty smoothly, so I guess I'm okay playing Stalker. Unless I want to play around a sweeper, but I think I gotta try and get in the damage while I can. Could have also potentially used Stalker to perpetually give Pouncer one additional power. Although then we wouldn't have been able to play around a sensor. Okay. So, probably want to perpetually give Vanguard one additional power here. So, activate this. Play Sovereign first, I suppose. And then the Vanguard gain a life. Alright, opponent's got the counter spell here. At least it makes it less likely that the opponent has a sweeper on turn 4. And then now we still have Kahira we can use. If they kill Pouncer we can potentially eternalize it. So we've got a few ways to spend our mana. Iteration, gonna go digging. Could always top deck like a King of the Pride and kill the opponent on the spots. Alright, so let's attack, and then I can perpetually give Kahira one additional power after attacking. So before damage. Bone falls to two. And we'll see if they can wipe the board here. Opponent maybe saw Kahira as our companion, thinking we were a blue-white control deck without any creatures. And was maybe relying on that fact to keep a hand without much interaction. So one of the hidden advantages of playing cats. Maybe they just didn't have double whites, with a Triome coming into play tapped to cast her Wrath. Helix on Cub. So they're still dead on board, even before we play Kahira. And our opponent explodes, so fast game here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Turn 1 Stalker can even perpetually give Pouncer one additional power before playing it. Sentinel I can still attack into at least. So up against Elves, presumably, which is not a great matchup. Just gotta hope to have a more explosive draw. Cup the draw. Could be interesting. So... Yeah, let's enact our game plan here. Can attack. And grow the Pouncer. And then probably fine to play Pouncer over Cub, although Cub would also be reasonable. It's just that Pouncer's gonna deal a ton of damage if we play Sovereign next turn. So yeah, turn one Stalker, turn two Pouncer is a great sequence. Opponent stuck on two lanes, that's promising for us. And then... I don't have to play 
Sovereign, I could go Cub plus Vanguard first. And then just chain together Sovereign. Do this main phase to gain a life. Right, there's a War Master. But is it too little too late? Can even grow my Long Tusk Cub before damage. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, opponent stumbled, stuck on two lanes, and we had a powerful start on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not loving this opening hands. Pretty clunky with triple three drop, no two drop. Have to use my energy to play the stalker to begin with. Let's take a mulligan. This is better. So turn one stalker, turn two pouncer. Don't think I need Pride Maid necessarily, although I could miss on the third land, in which case Pride Maid is still a 2-drop. So if I want to, I guess, play it safe, then maybe bottom the Sovereign and keep King of the Pride. Prospector, so up against Goblins. Not a great matchup, I would say. If they can enact their game plan, they're usually gonna be able to combo off with Muxes before we present lethal in most games. But yeah, we've got a nice aggressive start with Stalker into Pouncer at least. Found our third land for King of the Pride. So lots of ways to get Pouncer in for damage. Wily Goblin means they could already play turn 3 Muxes, which, you know, is pretty powerful. And uh, they could also just trade the Wily Goblin for Stalker. Would be acceptable. I think I would still be happy to grow the Stalker so I can pump Pouncer essentially, or I could save my energy to play Long Tusk Cub, which is also reasonable. Opponent's about to take it. Yeah, in that case, I think we'll play Pouncer. Two one double strike. Next turn, gonna be four power double strike. Right, it's gonna be matron to find Muxus for next turn, and another chum blocker for Pouncer. We would have had a better chance against kind of the Lord heavy draw from the Goblin deck, but as soon as Krenko and Muxus get involved, we're gonna be in trouble. Iron Crank feet. In fact, gonna go for Muxus right now. Well, gotta hope they brick, and then we'll have a chance. Yeah, that's not really a brick. Matron finding probably another Muxus or Krenko with a Warchief in play it means they're gonna take over the game. Goblin Chain Whirler. Bit of an ambitious card. Had I kept my Sovereign, I would have been able to potentially survive the one damage, but sadly King of the Pride's a little vulnerable here. So yeah, this is not gonna end well for me. Can attack, and then the Chain Whirler is gonna be pretty effective. Can play a Long Tusk Cub or Pride Mate. Probably going to be on Chum Blocking Judy for Muxus anyway. Opponent sends in the team, and I have to trump Muxus. And I don't think there's a draw that saves me, even Collected Company wouldn't do it. Guess we'll see if our opponent plays around Seldor Vekic.
It's going to be a snoop. Alright, at least they seem to be thinking about subtle. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. We've got uh, Vanguard to combo with Pride Mate and Stalker to combo with Long Tusk Cub. Sequencing's gonna be interesting. I'm guessing it's turn one Stalker, turn two maybe Cub, and then turn three I could Vanguard plus Pride Mate and get the extra counter right away. Ooh, King of the Pride could be nice. So, where do I want to put the extra power from Stalker is a question. Is it the Cub or the Pride Mate opponent playing Hazard? So it could be a removal heavy deck. I think I'll just save my energy and then play the Cub and pass. And then I can maybe save it from a two damage burn spell. Yeah, opponent is blue-red, so Unholy Heat, not going to be able to take out Cub. And then I think I'll still go Vanguard Pride Mate before playing King of the Pride. Have to be a bit careful with activating Cub, because if I activate with no additional energy, they could deal two damage in response. So I'm just going to attack. Right, opponent does have the Unholy Heat, as expected, kills Pride Mage, sure. Now I'm pretty safe to activate the Cub. And then attack. Back up to 3 energy. Looting. So opponent may be an Arclight Phoenix deck. And well, opponent explodes, so I guess they just don't have many answers for a cub that's gonna snowball out of control. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Lots of energy synergies here. Turn one speaker. The life game matchup can be pretty rough if they manage to play their bishop and resplendent angel. Since we don't have any removal, and they can kind of go over the top of what we're doing. But we'll see. Soul Warden. And the Ozolith. That's an interesting one. Maybe this is a version playing the 3 mana enchantment to get back 1 drops from the graveyard. So, what to do with a Stalker? If our opponent's going to reanimate their 1 drops, then... Trading it's not great, but I mean, it's not doing anything else. And then I'm gonna play a Cub here. Question is if I wanna keep the energy for Cub or use the one from Stalker. I think I'll save it for Cub. And then, yeah, we'll just attack, see what they do. I'm guessing they'll just take the one. Yeah, opponent is trading, so that does imply that they. Might have that enchantment to return Soul Warden. I do have a Feline Sovereign, which can potentially destroy artifacts and enchantments. Heliot's sadly indestructible. But Ozolith could be our target here. So yeah, let's go for it. And then I'll pump the cub before damage, assuming they take it. Also let's down. In the graveyard where it should be. Opponent reading Feline Sovereign for the first time. Next turn we can generate more energy with a tune. Banishing Lights probably goes for Sovereign. Yep. 
so wouldn't mind drawing another one. Pouncer is not bad. So, what's my plan here? Probably Pouncer, Sacred Cat, a tune, or I could double a tune. No, I'll get the Sacred Cat out there. In case they somehow put an extra counter on speaker, I could at least double block. And then I'll pump twice. There was a reason to play Ether Hub there, in case I draw another Ether Hub or Stalker, I would get two additional energy to maybe get an extra cub activation. Also Lith and an attack can trade. And then an extra neck could eternalize the pouncer. Also Lith gets a counter. And so does Heliod. Just a two devotion at the moment. Yeah, I think eternalizing is fine. Could also go for a tune. That way I have land six to guarantee putting Kahira in hand next turn and playing it right away. But Pouncer is probably still better. Soul attack. Yeah, not sure if her opponent maybe has some sweeper that they're setting up here. Don't think so. Otherwise I could kind of hedge my bets and not go for the Eternalize yet. Has been a pretty strange game. Don't usually see Ozolith in these life gain decks, let alone two. That one makes a token. That's fine. So they still seem dead on board if I play the attune here. Or I guess even without it. They can chump the double striker, still be dead. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Probably tapped Temple Garden into Ether Hub, and then turn three, I can have two energy thanks to the second Ether Hub before attacking to maybe attack as a three-three. And I guess the Sovereign makes it one more. Hard evidence, alright. We will be able to attack past the Crab. I think I still like Cub over Pouncer. So this might be some sort of combo deck. Trying to turn tokens into scarier creatures. Can also potentially work with a Clue token. Yeah, I guess we'll play Sovereign, which could also destroy the clue, so that ability potentially comes in handy. Opponent takes it. So we'll destroy the clue. And then Lance gives access to Company, if not, probably go for Pride Sovereign. So next turn we could maybe see Transmogrify or Creativity. And then I'm not sure what creature opponent's gonna cheat into. If it's the 
angel, then uh, we're probably dead since we don't have any answers to it. I do have land for for company, so I'll tank with the team, and then probably company before damage. See what we can find. Right, it's going to be an omen, so yeah, it further indicates their plans to turn tokens into angels. Jumping the sovereign, no. Opponent jumps cub. Still going to go for company here. Finding feline sovereign, king of the pride, most likely. Get to destroy the omen. But if our opponent has creativity, it slides out. Transmogrify, much the same. Alright, there's land four. But no play from our opponents. Alright, so I guess we've got a chance. I'll send in the team. Do I have to worry about Zelda wreckage? I mean, that's gonna be hard to beat. I think I gotta keep up the pressure here before my opponent can somehow combo. So I don't think I'm playing around it. Maybe the King of the Pride can stay back. Although, if they don't have Settle, I could have lethal thanks to company if I do attack with everyone. Yeah, they might just have another Omen of the Sun. But Cell would make sense in their deck as opposed to Wrath, since they want to keep their tokens in play. Hmm. This might cost me the game, but I'll save the king, I guess. Not just a Shark Typhoon for two. Fair enough. We'll see how they block... Just a single chump, so if company finds a lord, we can win. And that's a lord. Alright, sweet. So I managed to dodge the creativity and transmogrify on turn 4. Otherwise, I don't think we can really win once the emissary is in play. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Stalker into Pouncer. Probably shock myself. Give myself more options in case I draw like an ether hub. And then turn three, probably sovereign attune, providing more energy for stalker. Turn one soul warden, so another life gain deck. Okay. Attack. And then before damage, grow the pouncer. There's a bishop, not what we wanted to see. Okay, so. Could trade Pouncer for Bishop, which would be honestly a fine trade, and then maybe go for a tune. But now that we drew the lands, I'm guaranteed to be able to play Company next turn, so just playing Sovereign seems better. And then I can send both. Get an extra energy. Probably just see them block the Stalker. They could double block, but they probably want to keep Soul Warden. Especially if they have Resplendent Angel to make an extra token right away. It's kind of the dream start. Soul Warden into Bishop into Resplendent Angel. And yeah, there it is. So not much we can do against this type of draw. Just gotta hope Company gives us like double King of the Pride or something. Oh, got one of them.
and then probably does a sovereign attack, trade for an angel token. Doesn't sound amazing, but I do gotta keep up the pressure. Yeah, this is probably fine. And then I can activate Stalker once again. Or I could save the energy to maybe pump a creature we put in hand next turn, like Kahira. Alright, opponent does make the block. So, do I want to pump? Yeah, I think I do. Opponent falls to 11. But if they have more angels... This is going to be difficult to overcome. They might have their own company. Right, it's going to be Protector Shield instead. Feline Sovereign would have been a way to destroy that. So I can attune. Put Kahira in hand. And then... Should still have fine attacks for the most part. So I don't think the shield matters too much. Alright, so our opponent's giving us a little bit of hope here with that shield play instead of another angel, but let's see if they can gain more life. Activating Resplendent Angels, 6 mana total, so that's not a concern yet. It's going to be Heliot's Intervention to gain life and make an extra token, fair enough. Trigger Resplendent Angel again. Not a bad turn here. So I can play Kahira before attacks. And then... This gets to attack. And these two can attack. And then I can pump to grow the Sovereign. Stalker finally trades. Could also save my energy in case I top deck like a long tusk cub. Which would also be reasonable. How much does it matter that I pump Sovereign since I'm probably gonna make tokens with it? Although I guess I can get one attack in thanks to Vigilance first. Yeah, I guess I'll use my energy while I can. Alright, so opponent still has their initial three card combo in play. But they didn't seem to have any angels last turn. Another bishop. Into Heliods, which is active. So that's gonna start putting counters everywhere. So, yeah, it's not looking great for me. Feline Sovereign, interesting draw. So, can play Feline Sovereign and try and get one of my creatures to connect to destroy the Protector Shield. Although my opponent has a Spirit they can jump with and a Heliod that can block one of my creatures, even potentially killing the Pouncer if that attacks. So it's not like I really have any great attacks here. I'm gonna pump the Angel, which can maybe start flying over next turn. Hmm. Maybe I have to make a bit of a reckless attack. Don't think Kahira gets in there. Or maybe Kahira does. 
And then I still get to exert Pride Sovereign as well, making a couple more tokens. I guess next turn I can also just use Heliodon Resplendent Angel instead of having to draw land to use the ability. So our opponent will lose a shield at least. So that happens. And one mana short of eternalizing. And then I can wait until end of turn to decide if I want to exert or not. Another Resplendent Angel plus enough mana to give Angel life link to here. Yeah, that's probably game over. Opponent's just gaining so much life with double bishop. Well, we gave it a shot. But uh, yeah, the initial 1-2-3 curve was going to be hard to beat. So I guess I'll exert Pride Sovereign, but don't think it's gonna end up mattering. Our opponent's life total has been in single digits, now back to the 30s. Chani's Pride made the draw. So yeah, I think this is probably game over. Can eternalize Pouncer. Don't have any particularly great attacks. And next turn we should be dead in the air. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand is reasonable. Sacred Cat to synergize with Pride Mate on turn two. I'll try it. And then a tune finds line number three. So we're gonna tune into another Pride Mate potentially. Making the Sacred Cats a pretty high value target for removal in a weird way. Opponent on looting, discarding. Ooh. So this is the Dragon Reanimator combo deck. Trying to combo Blade Wing with the Terror of the Peaks to one turn kill us. Well, I um, think we stick to the plan. Just gonna try and present lethal as quickly as possible, and I think a tune into Pride Mate does that. And then get an extra green. And then the Stalker could grow with a Pouncer as well next turn. So I guess there's no huge difference between whether or not I play the Feline Sovereign. Let's say if they do have removal for Sacred Cat, maybe like uh, Prismari Command. Then if I play Sovereign, I'm still hitting for 9 damage and I would have lethal next turn. If I don't, I would sp still probably get there next turn anyway. So yeah, I don't think there's a huge reason to do one over the other, but we'll try this approach. A tune, play Stalker, and then I can use it twice before playing the Pouncer, basically. I'll attack, 
See what happens. Alright, there's a Prismari command. And yeah, there's a Dragonstorm in the graveyards. And given that they discarded Master, they probably have another one in hand. So next turn, we're probably just dead to the combo. And there's not much I can do about it. Play Pouncer. And Mizzix's Mastery for Dragonstorm. Yep. They can get a Terror of the Peaks plus a another copy of Bladewing, and then they can keep looping Blade Wings with each other while triggering Terror of the Peaks. So yeah, opponent had kind of the perfect start here with discarding Bladewing and they already had a Mystic Mastery. So yeah, Blade Wing keeps looping, Terror of the Peaks keeps tanking up for damage triggers, and that's eventually gonna kill us. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we have a couple life gain synergies to go with Pride Mate, so I'll try it. Sacred Cats into Pride Mate, probably gonna be our initial sequence. Although King of the Pride kinda wants us to have the Pouncer in play the turn we played. Up against Humans, which should be a winnable tribal matchup. Now, do I still want to play Sacred Cats since I'm not necessarily going to have a good attack next turn to grow the Pride Mate. So I might want to play Vanguard to set that up. Yeah. And then turn 2, probably go for Pouncer. And then turn 3, if I have a land I have the option of King of the Pride. If not, I could maybe uh, play a tune into Pride Mates, and then we'll have the three creatures to trigger Vanguard, as we see turn to Aspirant. So Sacred Cat would have worked out here, but that's okay. Now I guess I'll just play another Pride Mate so we can start growing both. And I'll get my one point of damage in with Vanguard, since the opponent's not gonna trade. Although I kinda don't want him to in a way. Another Aspirant. Yeah, it's gonna be a close race. Opponent being on the play certainly matters. Another Vanguard's great. So let's get planes. And then I think it's Pride Mate over Double One Drop. Although Double One Drop has the advantage of allowing me to chump with a Sacred Cat, which I didn't really care about too much. Yeah, it's actually an interesting choice. So let's say I go Pride Mate here. I've got two 3-3s. Three yeah, I think I'm liking the Sacred Cat Vanguard play more. Do have to watch out for Giant Killer from the opponent's deck, which could kill the Pride Mate. So, I will be attacking with it right now. Should be able to survive a Faceless Haven activation here by jumping with a Sacred Cat.
And we also have the option of playing King of the Pride if that lines up better. Right, opponent does have the Giant Killer, unfortunately. Thanks with the team. If I take 9 next turn and play King of the Pride, I would gain 3 for 5, up to 7. I don't even force my opponent to jump necessarily, and they would probably still kill me on the way back. They have Giant Killer as a tapper now too. So I think it's probably still worth it to jump. Keep my life total a little bit higher. And then land allows me to potentially double spell. Can either go King plus Sacred Cats or Pride Mate Pouncer. If I go Pride Mate Pouncer, I go up to eight. The Vanguards are probably interested in attacking. Next turn I'll have two blockers, eight life. They can tap Pride Mates, attack. I'll have one blocker. And uh, I think that still leaves me in trouble. I guess with the two counters from Aspirant, I can block one of the four powered creatures, take seven down to one. What if they, instead of tapping, activate Haven attack? I have two blockers. Block, block. And then, if they pump Giant Killer twice, I would be taking 9, so that would leave me dead. So I cannot attack with both Vanguards, but I do think Pride Mate plus Pouncer is the play. Yeah, otherwise I would be dead on board if I swing with both vanguards to just uh, Haven activation, Aspirant counters on Giant Killer, and I would be taking 9. I guess I can even attack with Haven and use Giant Killer thanks to Vigilance now. So I'll have to double chump. And go to one. Alright, so I think we might actually have Exaxes on the way back. Because if I play King of the Pride, we'll have a third creature to trigger Leon and Vanguard. Which will put an extra counter on Pride Mate. So we'll be attacking with a seven powered Pride Mate. And then after Vanguard gets plus one plus one, goes up to four power. So that's exactly 11. Wow, what a close game here. We were on the draw against a pretty good hand from the Humans deck, and they definitely had the better half of their deck since cards like Thalia or Esper Sentinel wouldn't have been incredibly impactful against our all-creature deck. But uh, yeah, we still got there, so a nice showing of the Cat Tribal deck. And overall, I've been quite impressed with how the deck played out. Of course, it's not going to compete with some of the top-tier tribal strategies in Historic, like Goblins or Elves, but we weren't really expecting that going in. But still good to see some nice performances, especially from the uh, one-mana Longta Stalker has been impressive. And then the small energy package plays quite well with the rest of the deck. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.